As well as being your resident plant vs zombies guy, I'm also a musician. Heavy emphasis on the term. So when I suggested the idea of ranking all the jams of Neon Mixtape Tour, I thought, why not? Why not combine two of my admittedly very limited interests and make a ranking video out of them? So here I'll rank all seven jams in the world of Neon Mixtape Tour. This is based on my personal taste. And as you can tell from this CD collection here, it's a great one. What's a CD, you ask? The platform the real ones listen to their music on, I tell you. I'm GMBS and here is my ranking of all seven Neil Mixtape tour themes. Can I play these for every nine seconds without being copyrighted? Let's see. First up is the basic jam pre-jam if you will, the one at the beginning of the stage may be at the bottom of the list, but it's definitely not bad. It's just... well it's in the name isn't it? I mean to be fair, I don't think this one even has an official name, so I just decided to dub it the basic jam. This song acts like the calm before the storm when you play a level and is reminiscent of late 70s and 80s pop and the new romantic movement with its electric piano mixed in with PVZ's typical use of cheesy synths. Unfortunately you don't get to enjoy this track for long, as it never comes back afterwards due to the actual jams coming right after, but it sets the tone for the throwback theme of Neon Mixtape Tour. Number 6 is the rap jam. Oh my god, he put the rap one low! He's racist! This one's clearly popular among the zombies, given it's the only one that's actually shared by two of them, namely the breakdancer and the MC zombie, but scores low due to having no real hook or catchy element. Which in all fairness is pretty normal for hip hop, and yes I'm biased because I'm not a fan of this genre, but its composition mainly consists of this clapping beat that kinda gets old. It gets better though, as it builds up with more sims as well as turntable scratches, and is also characterised by its sub bass break later on. Of course, this jam coming on means you have to deal with the pure annoyance of zombies getting tossed midway into your defences by a very flamboyant whirlwind, or even worse, melee plants getting annihilated by one very spinny microphone. But overall, this jam does a great job of throwing in a hip-hop element to the world while sticking with the world's colourful imagery. Number 5 is the Ballad Jam. This one comes up less than the rest due to the boombox zombie not appearing in many levels. And there's also the only one that is actually played by the zombies themselves. Out with your crap and in with a sappy yet enjoyable piece of balladry. Starting off similar to the intro jam, it peaks at the guitar solo about 45 seconds in, which is praised by Garden Warfare 2 players as the theme of Party Rose. It's a shame the jam doesn't get the said good bit most of the time, it only lasts 8 seconds unless boombox zombies chain off each other and then lengthen the track. Overall, it's like a more mellow and downbeat version of the hair metal jam, and while I'd say it is inferior to the hairy gog spanger, it's still a good track that doesn't come up enough. Number 4 is the pop jam. Titled Soda Jerk, yes I'm being serious, the song does buff possibly the most annoying zombie in this world outside of the hairy gog. But it's a synth pop bang that sounds like the moment in a nightclub when you know that things are going to get epic. Well, assuming that this thing isn't in the club, that is. Featuring a distinctive synth hook and a sort of throbbing synth bass you'd expect to hear from New Order, the song can get repetitive after a while, but later on it transitions into a super groovy galactic synth hook, which should have even the biggest synth pop haters bopping their head. Also, as a nice bonus, it slowed the zombies down by 20%. A relief if it comes after the punk jam, which gives them a speed boost. So it's kind of like the headache you get after excessive head banging. Anyway, it may have missed out on the top three, but the pop jam sure beats out of the current state of the Billboard Hot 100. Number three is a hair metal jam. A lot of people consider this the best one, maybe I'm a bit biased because I'm not a fan of metal, including glam or hair metal, which I don't even really consider metal, but that's not a debate I'm going to get into now. But despite basically signalling doom for your lawn due to being the jam for the most overpowered zombie in the game, and therefore pleasing the metal supremacists, this slaps, as the uncool kids say. 
Featuring a flurry of shreddy solo that most definitely weren't played by the hair metal Garganja himself, given he only knows one chord, this track most definitely channeled the trend of the 1980s where musicians had very long, very bright and very hairsprayed hair, and even more makeup than your girlfriend. Kidding! It's such a banger that is unfortunately tainted by the fact it's associated with this guy. Also annoyingly comes up at the beginning of many levels in the greatest hits. But hey, if it doesn't have you doing this, then you're lying. One rock spot goes to the 8-bit jam. It may be derived off the least mainstream music genre out of them all, but this is a banger. A chip tune track literally called Chip Tune, try saying that five times fast. The arcade S tune uses a ton of bleeps and bloops, bass dirtier than the zombie's breath, and electronic cowbell sounds. Perfect for the next time you're blowing your two peas out for the chance to win a bracelet, or trying to get that jackpot score on the big wheel, or even playing some cool Space Invaders game if your local arcades actually happen to be good. This poke chip key ring is the best thing I've ever gotten from an arcade. Also, in my opinion, the 8-bit jam has the best accompanying lore decoration. Just beware that your plants don't get decimated by this nerdy freak of nature or his accompanying pixely zombies, and then you're free to jam out to this tune. And number one is the Punk Jam. Yeah, you probably guess it's the top spot given it's literally my outro, but hey, you could be a first time watcher, so... Hey, my name's Asa, I play a Jaguar guitar and I think Tall Turnip is a bad plant, please subscribe. Anyway, the straightforward rock song has been compared to the likes of Green Day, but I'd say it's more reminiscent of Queen when they're out there thrashiest. In particular, it's reminiscent of the hard rock section of Bohemian Rhapsody. Honestly, there's not really much to analyse about the song. A simple drum beat that you can't resist bopping your head to, paired with a flurry of rebellious sounding guitars, make for the best Neon mixtape tour track. Yes, it does usually signal the arrival of a horde of punk zombies coming for your neck. Yep, for some reason it doesn't affect in punk. And also gives them a 50% speed boost, but if you just get lost in the music, the experience is a lot more fun. Although it might cause you to lose the level. But all these jams are part of the reason why I prefer Plant vs Zombies 2's music over that of the first game. And despite the world overall not being my favourite, they did an excellent job on the music. That's my list, what about yours? Let me know in the comments and also if you'd like to see me do a ranking of the legendary jingles of Garden Warfare 2. Like the video, subscribe if you haven't already. I'm GMVS, thanks for watching.